Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today I'm going to be showing you uh, the second part of our procedural generation Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series, which is making a procedurally generated wall. So, got some fun stuff coming up. Um, if you see in our previous tutorial, we made the procedural generation floor, which you know you can enter in your default values and create a really cool floor just instantly, super cool. Um, but we are going to be making a wall in this tutorial. So what I want you to do is go into the content browser, find our procedural generation folder, and let's right click and add a new blueprint class. Um, make it of type actor. We'll call this um, proc gen wall. Just keep it super simple. Now we can open that up. And you'll see inside is just a basic default scene route. Um, you can leave it. It doesn't really matter to this tutorial. So, um, yeah. So basically, what we want to do is we want to add something called an instance. I really can't type today. Instance static mesh. Let's call this wall. Now, what we want to do is take the wall, go into the details panel under static mesh, and we want to select our wall mesh. So just type wall and um, I do have the starter contents enabled, so I have a bunch of different walls that I can choose from here. Um, but I'm going to go with the wall 400 by 300. So I'm going to add that. And you'll notice that it doesn't show up here right away. Um, so just to kind of show what it looks like and the direction that it's facing, I'm going to add an instance. So there it is. So you can see um, here's our wall, right? It's 400 units in length by 300 units tall by 20 wide, right? So we've got our dimensions for it, um, and it's facing the x direction. So because of that, we want to generate our instances in the x direction. So what we'll do, um, well, first we need to add a couple variables. Um, actually, very first, we need to delete that because we don't need it. All right, so go to variables. Let's add a variable. Let's call it number meshes x. Change that to an integer. Make it public. And then we add, need to add one more um, called mesh length. Change that to a float. And again, make it public. All right, so compile and save. And now go to the construction script. So in the previous tutorial, we used for loops to do our um, procedural generation. And we're going to do the same thing here. So basically, um, just drag off, type for loop. And here it is. So you'll see it has first index, last index. Um, and basically what it does is it says, you know, for, for all of the indexes that we have, do something with it, right? Or do something to each index. So we're going to use our number of meshes, x, as the number of, or as our index, right? And this is a zero, uh, zero based, like, number scale. So um, automatic, by default, this value will be zero, but uh, I'm just going to enter it in here so you can see. And now similarly, we need to convert whatever our number of meshes is to um, a zero uh, based number scale as well. So I'm going to drag off here and to do this, just subtract one, right? And just like that, super easy. And so plug that return value into the last index and you're good to go. Now all we need to do now is we need to drag our wall in and we need to add instance. There we go. And then hook up the loop body. So just like that. And now you'll notice that we have an instance transform here, right? So what it's wanting us to do is define where we want to place um, each of our instances. So to do this, we'll drag off and say make transform. And now we're only concerned with the um, location right now. So I'll just drag off of location, say make vector. And just like in the last video, we're going to take the index number from here, and we're going to multiply it by our met, um, by our dimensions, basically. So drag off of index, say times, int times float, and we'll plug the return value into our x, right? Because we are generating them in the x direction, so we want to place them, you know, each one farther along in the x direction. So for for the in value here. We want to drag our mesh length and just attach it. And really, that's all the setup that we need. So you can see number of meshes x going into the for loop, you know, going through, making our transform, and then adding an instance. So the last thing we need to do 
is give these some default values. So number of meshes x, let's just say one. And then mesh length. Um, if you remember, right, with my wall, it's a 400 by 300, so its length is 400 units. Um, but if yours doesn't, you know, say, you might have a different mesh. So if you just find your mesh in the content browser, you can open it. And up here it says approx size, and you can see its dimensions here. So here's the X, the Y, and the Z. So just find, find the correct value, and then you can plug it in to the mesh length. All right, so mesh length, we're using 400. Compile, save. And now if you look in the viewport, you can see we have one mesh generated, right? So now um, I'm going to delete this wall. I'm going to delete that wall too, because we're just going to do this. We're going to make these walls with our procedurally generated wall. It's going to be super cool. All right. So take your proc gen wall, drag it out, and drop it. Now we're going to rotate this really quick. Slide it over a bit. And now we can just use the variables that we exposed made and made them public, right? And we can just you know change um, and make it two, right? And there it is. It's, it just automatically generates one. So let's go six. Maybe that's not enough. Seven. Seven's probably all right. All right. We'll just leave it at seven. And then what you can actually do then is just if you hold Alt, drag it out. You, know, you can make make a duplicate. Rotate it again and slap it up next to this wall. And so just like that, we've procedurally generated some walls. So kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that's really the basics of it. And uh, in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to just make it, you know, two stories instead of one. So, <laughs> um, and then also f in the future, showing you how to, um, you know, add different types of walls in in here depending on the index it is. So like say this wall section you wanted it to be a door we could add a doorway or this one and this one you want it to be a window you know we could add some windows there um, but yeah basically that is it for this tutorial so um, thank you for watching if you want to see more you know subscribe like whatever um, but with that thank you and good